Customers often ask us, what's the best way to measure forecast accuracy or forecast error? So we put together a simple Excel model to illustrate exactly how to do that. There are two metrics that are really important when it comes to measuring the quality of a forecast. One is forecast bias, which measures how often your forecast is over or under the actual. The other is your forecast error, which measures how uh, the typical deviation you should expect between the actual and the forecast. So first, let's measure bias. To get bias, we really just need a simple count of the number of times your forecast exceeds the actual versus the number of times it falls below. And so here we'll just label the column bias, and we'll do a simple equals if statement. So equals if the forecast is greater than the actual, comma 1, comma 0. And so here we can say it, 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 it is not greater, and therefore it doesn't get a point. And so now we can fill that formula down and sum it up. And we're able to now see that 5 out of the total 10, and here we can do 5 divided by 10, which is the number of items in this example, we do not have any forecast bias here. 50% uh, of the time the forecast exceeds the actual, the other 50% of the time it falls below the actual. That's a really, really good thing. And ideally, that's what you want to strive for in your forecast, so that what you're doing is really building additional safety stock to cover the variability. But if your forecast is consistently biased in one direction or another, uh, you're going to overcompensate for inventory. So it's not a good thing. So uh, now that you know uh, what the bias is, we can now measure uh, how accurate the forecast is or what the size of the error is. So the first thing we'll do is measure the, uh, measure the actual error, which is simple. It's just actual minus forecast. And we can see this here. We have an actual that's 25 units greater than the forecast. Some are negative, some are positive. So we'll, we'll, we'll also want to measure the overall deviation. So we're going to look at abs, absolute error, which removes the upward or downward uh, error. So we're just going to say absolute error of that cell. And then we get to add up all of the absolute errors to determine the total error. And this is really the key. So we know that the total unit error is 205. So in order to calculate the overall percentage error, the mean absolute percent error, we're going to take the 205 and divide that by the actual, the sum of the actual. So some of the some of the forecasts divided by some of the some of the errors divided by some of the actuals gives you your forecast error. So you can see here we have a 37% forecast error. Now we can measure the individual uh, item percentage errors simply by taking that absolute error here in column G and dividing the absolute error into the actual. We can now see the individual item percent errors. And items that have higher percentage errors are usually indicated in, usually indicate that the historical data is much more volatile. So when you're uh, assessing forecast error, uh, it's really important not to think of the error as a uh, positive or negative thing. It's really actually a trait of the individual uh, of the individual item. So an item with a high error probably is more difficult to forecast in the first place, uh, and so you can't expect to get a super super low error in those situations. But hopefully this gives you a good sense for how to quickly calculate forecast bias, why that's important how to quickly calculate your overall error. And the idea here is over time you want to see that number dropping based on improvements you make to your forecast process uh, and you want to see that additional uh, feedback you provide with business knowledge and, and, and overrides you get from the field are actually resulting uh, in uh, a drop in that overall error. Thank you very much.